Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. We've just witnessed a blockbuster game, an absolute blockbuster, and I thought it deserves a video. Now, I'm going to get into a couple of things first, because I know you guys were probably expecting a different video today, and I'm about to explain, but before I do, two things, firstly, make sure you follow me on the socials, links are in the description, Twitter and Instagram, active on there, hit me up, follow there now, and enjoy. Secondly, let's give a shout out to the new members of the YTF Army in the starting 11, so the ones that have joined the Eunice Talks Football channel on here much appreciated for becoming a member in the starting 11 shout outs are due here they are jack the sparrow django alex lil don chelsea adam durani and siafik hassan now um special shout out to adam durani because i know he's been watching me since time ago i remember seeing his comments lingering about when i had a very very small channel back in the day <laughs> <laughs> so fair play to Adam but everyone else thank you very much as well for joining and being in the starting 11 enjoy the discord enjoy the enjoy the new perks and let's get cracking um I didn't do the video that all of you were probably expecting me to do today that's coming tomorrow um I'm gonna witness the fallout right and then I'm gonna analyze and then I'm gonna come in you know what I'm on about I'm on about this big massive mason mount debate that's kicked off across social media and i have to say the catalyst for that was miz who um <laughs> who i i speak to on all you can eat chelsea over on matisse's channel on a weekly basis he decided to uh put up a video that i think he came across he didn't make it but he came across it and he stuck it up on Twitter um, with a compilation of all of the mistakes that Mason Mount made in the game against Liverpool yesterday. Which, to be fair, personally, I've not got much of a problem with. I don't care if it's Mount or if it's any other player in the squad. If they are deserving of criticism and you outline who, what the mistakes are, I've not got a problem. Um, but it seemed like there was a lot of people that were disagreeing with with the comp and a lot of people agreeing with it and it just turned into an absolute madness and now we've got a massive debate including Chelsea journalists journalists who cover Chelsea that has come into the debate all the other guys have done videos on it you can go and check all of their channels I'm not going to list them one by one there's a lot of them um, but the usual the other the other Chelsea lads they've all done a video on it I haven't yet I will give mine tomorrow I will give mine tomorrow. We'll see what I have to say, right? Um, so we'll see what the fallout is and I'll get to you guys tomorrow. So keep your eyes peeled for that video. It's going to be a good one. But today, it's only right that we give the time and attention to the ones who actually do deserve it. Arsenal 3, Manchester United 2. First and foremost, I have to say, credit to Manchester United. I didn't expect them to hold on for that long. I didn't expect them to be able to cling on to a result for that long or to be in the game for that long. I knew that they, they had a chance. They had um, a, a level of expectation coming into this maybe to potentially get a draw. I didn't really see them winning, but they done well. Tactically, they were in the game. Ten Hag set them up in a way that I think... Uh, was the best way. I don't think there's any other way that you can take on this Arsenal team at the moment. And considering what Manchester United have available to them, I think they approached the game in the right manner. But it's not to do with Manchester United that were unable. It's more to do with how able Arsenal are. Arsenal right now, I have to put my hands up. I know some Chelsea fans are not going to like this. They're going to be like, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm going to throw up, right? Look, you have to give respect and praise where it's due. Now, some are probably going to say they don't show us respect. Don't be like them then. <laughs> don't stoop to their level. You know, if you're going to realise that I've come across Arsenal fans that have given Chelsea respect, right? Depends who you come across. It's not 100% of the fan base that are going to, you know, crap all over you. There are going to be good ones there. For those, I respect. And I have to be real. This is football. You be honest. You know, you give praise where it's due and you give critique where it's due. And for to be honest, right now, look, I've given Arsenal a lot of critique over the years. It's been a lot of fun doing it too. But now I have to be honest. You've got to put your hands up and say, Arsenal look perfect. They look absolutely perfect in every single way. How can you not respect it? Simple as that. You know, I know some people are going to say, oh, but when we won the Champions League and no one expected Arsenal, Arsenal fans didn't really say much about us, did they? They were, they were crapping all over us. Listen, the ones that you bump into were probably doing that. As I've said, I've come across a couple that have literally told me, yo, you guys won it. Fair play to you guys. I wish my team could win the Champions League. 
And I'm like, I know, London is blue. But right now, honestly, Arsenal are playing like London is red. Let's be honest. They are absolutely electrifying. So electrifying, you'd think The Rock is going to show up at the Emirates to electrify the place. Don't worry, he'll be back at the Royal Rumble at the end of this month. <laughs> Um, well, well, actually, that's next week. That's next weekend. I'm looking forward to that then. Um, it's not announced, but it's expected. Arsenal, though, look incredible in every single department. And I was expecting that I had the question before the World Cup, when the Premier League stopped, I did say, look, is it going to get to a point where Arsenal, after the World Cup, are going to lose all their momentum? Is this just a little flash in the pan? Is this just a few games where they look amazing and they're going to go back to being normal old Arsenal? No, it's not. In fact, even with Gabriel Jesus out, where many thought would be the catalyst to why they wouldn't play good anymore, they look the same. They look unbelievable. And you've got players from all over the place carrying the load. Every single part of the pitch, Arsenal have absolutely covered. From the goalkeeper, Ramsdale. To the defence, Zinchenko is, for the Arsenal system and the way that they play and the way that he plays, his inverted runs are just magnificent. They are magnificent. The guy is basically a left midfielder. He's not a left back. But he gets back in time. He is a left back. He's able to track down. He's able to close down. He's able to get back into position. He's able to close down the spaces. And he's able to attack at the same time. It's mind-blowing. Gabriel and Saliba, beautiful partnership. Ben White at right back looks like... Actually, I'm not going to say it. I was going to say something outrageous there, but disrespect. It's like the Arsenal song about Rob Holding, about how he's better than Cannavaro. Like, okay, lads, can we put some respect on Cannavaro's name? Some of you won't know who Cannavaro is. That's showing my age. <laughs> but um, if you don't know Cannavaro, go back and look at the YouTube comps. Italian legend. But I was going to say something about Cafu when talking about Ben White. Let's not... <laughs> Let's not. But you got to, you got to rate it. Ben White came to Arsenal and all of us were like, 50 million? What are they thinking? I was looking at him as the second Harry Maguire. He's now playing incredible at right back. Who would have thought it? Who would have thought it? And the midfield. The midfield is my favourite part about this Arsenal team. It's not even Martinelli or Nketiah when he comes in or even Saka. And I'm going to come to him in a bit, but... Odegaard, Partey and Xhaka are playing like prime Essien, Lampard and Balak. Uh, let's, be, let's be real. They've got that midfield on lock. Odegaard is moving like Lampard. Partey is moving like Essien. Same country too. Kind of fits. And Xhaka's moving like Balak. Aggressive. Everywhere. It's a great balance and it's something that I didn't expect. I really did not expect. But they have found the balance. They have found the combination. And they look lethal. Defensively, they track everything down. They stop everything. Nothing gets to the defence. And when it does, it's cleared. And in terms of moving the ball forward and attacking, the, 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 the through balls are always there. And I love... Personally, my style, right? If, if, I, if I had to be in charge of a team, I would love my team to play direct. I would love my team to be able to pick out through balls, have runners constantly, second and third. I would love my defensive midfielder to be the absolute rock and protect the defense and literally get in the way of everything. And at the same time, is able to combine with the other midfielders and let them go a little bit. That would be the way that I would love to have my team play if I was ever in charge of a team. Arsenal are doing exactly that. It's beautiful. They all look forward. There's no looking backwards. They're constantly positive and looking forwards. There's constantly a block moving at the same time. And there's always combinations. Where whoever has the ball between Odegaard, Partey, Xhaka, Saka, whoever's up front, because it changes, and whether it's in Ketia or Jesus or whoever, or now Trossard, if Trossard's coming, Martinelli, there's always two, three or four options. Always, minimum two. For the player on the ball to give the ball to. They're constantly moving. They're constantly in space. They're constantly there for each other. And they move as a block. Whether they move to the left. Whether they move to the right. Whether they come central. Or whether they go forward down the middle. It's constantly moving and shifting together. And there's combinations in that block that's moving constantly backwards and forwards. It's a beautiful system. <laughs> It's a beautiful system. And then the front three are just absolutely lethal. Martinelli, great speed and pace, great technical ability. Zinchenko's on the overlap when he needs him. 
on the underlap when he needs him. Xhaka's there for support. He's loose. He's free to do what he wants. Same goes for Xhaka in order, in order of having that cover. But Saka, Saka's able to create literally by himself. We saw the goal that he scored today. Absolutely magnificent. And when you're scoring goals like that, you're going to win the title. You're going to win the league. This is how it is. And Ketia, everyone criticised and everyone's looking and going, how the hell has he got the number 14 shirt? How the hell is he getting paid that much a week? I think, what is he? He's on 100 grand a week now. Um, everyone was like, what the hell are they doing? He's coming clutch. When he's needed the most, he has delivered. And that's even against my team. That's even against Chelsea. So you got to rate it as much as I looked at that move. You give him that much money and you give him Thierry Henry's 14. I'm like, flipping hell. You've just, you've, just, you've just literally inflated his ego to the point of explosion. But look, he's delivered. And he's, he's continued to deliver. And maybe there was a point. Maybe... It's the right move. Personally, I still think he has a lot to prove. A lot of people are going to look at that or hear that and go, oh, that means you think Nketiah's flipping the next Henri. No, I'm saying that Nketiah still has a lot to get to that level. It's not anyone that's going to get to the level of Thierry Henry. Let's not disrespect him. But he has delivered when asked to. And you can't ask for more than that. Everything about this Arsenal team right now is screaming champions. It's screaming champions. And when you look at the way they get that last minute winner or the winner in the, in, after the 90, that's, that's a, it's those signs, it's those results that are going to win you the league. When that starts happening, you have luck on your side. But you make your own luck. And Arsenal are making their own luck. They had 25 shots today. And they, as I've said, they're always looking forward. Whenever someone picks up the ball, even if it's a, a, a centre-back or, or it's one of the full-backs, I'm so used to saying wing-backs now because I'm just used to a back three in a Chelsea team that I've forgotten what a full-back is. But whoever it is, as soon as they get the ball to the middle, any player, whether it's Odegaard, whether it's Partey or whether it's Xhaka, takes the ball, turns and looks forward and is gone. And then he's got two on, his, two on either side or one on, one on either side, constantly running. There's always an option and you don't know what way they're going to go. And that's the beautiful thing about this Arsenal team. They are so unpredictable when they're moving forward. You don't know where they're going. You look at other teams and you can just read exactly what they're going to do. You know the exact pattern that they're going to try and go at. With this Arsenal team, you cannot predict it. Saka's on the ball, you don't know if he's going to go inside or if he's going to stay on the outside. You don't know if he's going to cross the ball, if he's going to try and go low. You don't know if he's going to try and take a shot or is he going to try and go past two or three players. You don't know whether Xhaka or Odegaard's going to move central or they're going to shift it to the wing. Is there going to be someone on the overlap? Is there going to be someone dropping deep? You, you don't know because they, they do everything. This Arsenal team's electric. You can't, it's, it's, it's really, really, really hard to stop. It's really hard to stop. And United proved that today because I thought United defensively were not bad. They weren't bad. United did not play bad today. And fair play to United as well, as I've said. Tactically, the setup, um, the will. They took their chances when it came. They scored twice. They had an XG, I think, of zero point something. They scored twice. They'd done more than, that was, than, than what was expected. Uh, but they, you could see that they were trying to get the draw in the end. They were just trying to cling on and hold on. And Arsenal were just pressure, 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 pressure. I've not seen this Arsenal team play this well since 03. I was there in 03. I remember it. I was a kid, but I remember it very, very well. I was uh, on the way to secondary school. I remember that Arsenal team. I've not seen them play this well since then. They look electrifying. And they have, we have to be honest, when they're playing like this, they deserve the title. They deserve the title. They absolutely deserve to be champions. I have to say, though, there is one point. There is one sticky point that I know a lot of Arsenal fans are, or oh, they're choosing to just forget it. I would, because they've not won a league title in 19 years. But it's going to be different when they've got Champions League football next season. When you've got an added schedule to the, to, to, to the, to the calendar and there's more of a load, you're going to have to manage that and it's going to be harder to, to, to win the league that way. Chelsea managed to win the league under Antonio Conte when we had no European football and it was fantastic because you could just focus on the league and focus on the cup and that's it. You're basically playing like a normal Saturday league team does. But... This is the time that Arsenal are taking advantage of. It looks like they're not losing any momentum, even without a Gabriel Jesus, for example, when they're playing fantastic. They're going to win the title at this rate. Let's be real. They are not getting stopped. Now, as I've said, this result means a lot for them. This result is going to be key in them keeping that gap. And as the games go on, they've still got a game in hand as well in order for them to extend to eight points. 
I can't see them losing this now. I really can't. They've got to play Man City. Here's the kicker now. And I said this on Big Six Extra. I said, if you get a result against United, all you have to do is do not lose against City. Just do not lose. As long as you don't lose, you don't have to win. Just don't lose. You do that, Arsenal will be champions. I'm pretty certain they are on their way to the title. And they deserve it. They absolutely deserve it. So... There we are. Arsenal, huge congratulations. Massively deserved. I can only respect it. You can't talk, you can't say anything bad about this Arsenal team and the way that they're playing. And Man United, honestly, they shouldn't, they shouldn't, you know, keep their heads down. Today, as I've said, they, they were good. They done what was expected of them to do. They were unlucky, but Arsenal were just Arsenal at the moment. And and United shouldn't feel ashamed of losing 3-2. They gave them a good game. Um, Arsenal, not sorry, Man United were not expected to be in the title race. Let's be real. Their title race lasted about 20 minutes <laughs> against Manchester City, and that's about it. Um, but, yeah, United, definitely, I think they're going to get top four. Arsenal, are, <laughs> we're talking about top four. They're on their way to the title. Manchester City, now it's over to them. It's over to Man City. Are they going to be able to keep up a run of wins now? Because I do see City dropping points at some point as well. Will Arsenal drop points? Let me know in the comments. How do you see this faring out? Do you think it's happening? Let me know. Or do you think Man City will claw their way back? I'd love to hear from you guys down below. But again, huge congrats, Arsenal. Unlucky United. We move. And tomorrow, you'll be getting my Mason Mount video. That's going to get interesting. I will see all of you then. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you want. You hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash like button if you've enjoyed this. See you tomorrow, people. In a bit. Take care and peace.